Hello and welcome. Today's video idea has been completely inspired by another creator that I watch. Martina Lilly recently did a video where she took 10 of her eyeshadow palettes, which she had had her husband pick out for her, and went through them each and discussed whether she would repurchase the palette or not. I loved watching that video and I thought it was a really fun idea. I think she said that she had seen a couple of other creators do it before her as well, so I'm going to link all of those relevant videos below so you can check them out if you're interested. But I wanted to do my own take on that video concept because I just enjoyed watching it so much. So I asked my nephew Sam, he was actually on my channel quite a while back now, but he did my makeup in a video probably about a year and a half ago. Um, so some of you might remember him, but I asked him to go through my palettes and pick out 10. I didn't give him any guidance other than to say, try to kind of choose a variety of brands and sizes of palettes. And he went through and picked out 10. So if you'd like to see what he picked and my thoughts on them and whether or not I would repurchase each of these 10 palettes, just keep on watching. I have all the palettes stacked up here and I'm just gonna go in the order that they're piled. So the first one here is a Sydney Grace one. This is part of the Sydney Grace and Temptalia collaboration. This particular palette is the On The Horizon palette. So that's what the color story is. It's a beautiful palette. Of these three Sydney Grace and Temptalia palettes, this is certainly my favorite one. But would I repurchase it is the question we're asking today. My initial thought is no, I wouldn't repurchase it if I could. Um, just because I haven't used this very much lately. But looking at it again, it is really very beautiful. And a lot of these colors do appeal to me quite a lot. I love these greens here. This shimmer actually has a little bit of a green feel to it as well. So you can get a really beautiful kind of gradient green look. I love the addition of some of these warm tones, this beautiful kind of coppery shade here with the gold are really gorgeous. The copper almost has kind of a rosiness to it as well. I like this matte here. It's a great kind of neutral mauvey shade. This one as well is a good one for putting in the crease and building some shadow, but without being too deep. And then this one here is really gorgeous as well. This incredible kind of bright metallic heathery type shade, really gorgeous. So looking at this again and thinking about it a little further, I think it's possible that I would repurchase this, but probably only if I could get it on sale, which is actually how I bought the three Sydney Grace Temptalia palettes in the first place was on a pretty good sale. So I think maybe if I could get a good deal on it, I would repurchase it. But I do have to be realistic about the fact that I haven't used this very much lately as well. So kind of a maybe depending on the circumstances on whether I would repurchase that. Next up here, we have one of the Pat McGrath quads. This is actually one of the first ones, if not the first of her kind of special quads that ever came out and certainly the first one that I purchased. This one is called Ritualistic Rose and this is so my type of color story. I was very excited when this first released, particularly for this shade here because I love pink eyeshadows and I love Pat McGrath's Blitz and Astral shades and this is one of those shades of my dreams because you can see how sparkly and shiny and reflective it is and the flip and color there is really phenomenal. It goes really well with this shade right here as well, which is less dimensional, but a beautiful pairing for that um, lighter pinky shade there. You've got your gold here, which is not that exciting. It is a type of gold that I like. I enjoy those kind of paler golds. This gold to me is actually pretty similar to, I think the one in Midnight Sun, which is another kind of paler, slightly cooler gold. And then you have this bronzy shade here, which is also beautiful. All of these shades are baked, so they have that drier feel and they go on really nicely on the lid and they all have at least a little bit of shine in their finish. Here they are swatched. The color story works beautifully. And on the topic of repurchasing, I would definitely repurchase this, but again, it would have to be on a pretty decent sale, maybe like 30% or more off. It's another one that I love, but I just don't go to that often. I also have a whole lot of other Pat McGrath palettes. 
So I tend to like to work with a mixture of mattes and metallics and the more kind of sparkly shiny shades. So the fact that all of these are more shiny shades does I think prevent me a little bit from using this more than I could, but because they are all shiny, I tend to go for her Big Mothership palettes a little bit more just because I know that I have some mattes that I can work with in there as well. This is one that's very special. It's special to me because it was one of the first Pat McGrath palettes that I ever bought, and the color story is beautiful, really my style. Um, but because I don't use it as much as I would like to, it would have to be on a pretty good sale for me to repurchase it. Now we have another Pat McGrath palette. So this is one of her big mothership palettes. This is the Divine Rose 2 palette. And if you saw my recent Pat McGrath palette ranking video, I think this was number four in my rankings. This is what the color story looks like really beautiful palette but i have to say i would not repurchase this one and even though it was ranked so high in my ranking i think it's a great palette but i wouldn't repurchase it because of the other pat mcgrath mothership palettes that have been released since this one came out which really do a lot of the same things that this one does for me so i feel like because i have especially utopian dream i find it to be kind of the most similar in terms of the types of looks that I like to create from the palettes. Because of that one, I don't feel like I would need to repurchase this one if I lost it. Next up is actually a very new palette. This is the Suku palette that I reviewed very recently. It's the only Suku palette that I have. It is number 117, Akiyore. And that's what the color story looks like. So I will try to remember to link these recent videos that I've done as well so you can see my more complete thoughts on some of these palettes. But I think if I lost this one, I would repurchase it. It's kind of a hard decision to make right now because I've only been able to use it probably three or four times since I've gotten it, but I've really enjoyed it every time. I think it offers something unique among the rest of my eyeshadow palettes. It's really very easy to work with and this color story is Totally my style. I love this kind of pinky shade. The green is stunning. The duochrome works really beautifully with the rest of the shades. As I've mentioned, I kind of wish this were more of a sparkly topper, but I was advised by one of my viewers actually that the pinky shade works nicely as a sparkly topper. And I did try that and it was quite beautiful. And then the matte here is just a very useful color. This is really a type of brown that I find very useful in the crease. I can use it as liner as well. It's not too dark, it's not too light. It can be blended out to be quite soft though, just as all of these shades can. So I think if I did lose this and had the chance to repurchase it, I would, because it's quite a special palette. Next up is the Glam Light Ice Cream Dream Palette. This is one that I got quite a lot of use out of last spring and summer. It was really the only kind of pastel, fully colorful palette that I had at the time. I've since gotten the Natasha Denona pastel palette, which I tend to go to more now for pastel looks if I want to do that type of a look. But this is an incredible palette. I think the quality of these shadows is really beautiful. I'm often overwhelmed by palettes with this many shades in it. But in this case, I kind of feel like most, if not all of these shades make sense in here. There are still actually a couple of shades that I wish were in here that aren't, um, but I find that with, by mixing colors and so on, I can usually get to the types of looks that I want to get. So they don't quite have the pastel purple that I want, but I find by mixing that one and that one, and then I can mix in that lighter pink if I want to, I can get the type of shade that I'm looking for. I also wish there were kind of a lighter purple metallic. That's really the lightest purple metallic in this palette. Um, so I do find myself sometimes reaching for other palettes to go along with this one, but I think this is overall an excellent palette and I would consider repurchasing it at a good sale price if I lost it. But I think while I had the Natasha Denona pastel palette, I probably wouldn't bother repurchasing this. I guess I'm thinking out loud here, um, but ultimately I'm going to say no, I wouldn't repurchase this one. Now another one with quite a lot of shades in it. This is the Natasha Denona Metropolis palette. I am going to show you what mine looks like now, but I'm going to put up a picture on the screen actually because mine has some of the shades taken out of it and replaced with um, shades from other Natasha Denona palettes because 
I've played around with making custom palettes. And while most of the shades in here are still from the original Metropolis, there are definitely some that are missing and that have been moved around and or replaced by shades from other Natasha Denona palettes. As much as I enjoy this Metropolis palette, my gut is telling me I wouldn't repurchase it actually if I lost it or used it up. I don't use this as much as I thought I would, and I think part of the reason is because it has so many shades in it that I do find it a little bit overwhelming sometimes. I know with Natasha Denona palettes you can work in quads um, in any way, basically in lines or in like little square quads or diagonals, um, whatever way you want to, but I still find that there's just a lot going on with this palette. And while I do enjoy it, I find it hard to make decisions and I find myself wanting to use more shades than I probably really need to with it. The quality is excellent. I love the green shades in here. I love that there are so many cream to powder shades, but ultimately I think I just don't get quite enough use out of it that I would repurchase it if the opportunity arose. Next up is the Viseart Paris Edit. This is one that I went back and forth on buying for quite a while and eventually decided to buy. And I have to say, I was a little bit disappointed with this palette. Um, a lot of the colors kind of didn't quite translate the way I thought they might, or didn't look in person the way I thought they might look based on pictures that I had seen. And I really don't use this very much and haven't enjoyed using it much the times that I have. So I have to say, although the quality is good and really there's nothing wrong with this palette, it's just not something that suits me as much as I thought it might. And so this is a palette that I would not repurchase. Next up, we have another Natasha Denona. This is the Zendo palette. And this is another one where not all of these shades are the actual correct shades in the palette. So I'll put up a picture for it. But this is a palette that I love and I think is quite special. It's a color story that really suits me. My favorite shade in this palette is that kind of pale mossy green. I love it so much. Sort of similar to the green in the Suku palette, but it's a cream to powder. So it's more of a kind of matte finish. Um, actually, I'd love to work with those two shades together. Uh, but I just love the feeling that this palette gives. When I did my review video of this palette, I think I did like five or six looks and I just had so much fun playing with it. And I always like the looks that I come up with when I use this palette. So this is one that I definitely would repurchase. Now just two palettes left and there are smaller ones. First up, we have one of my Victoria Beckham Smoky Eye Bricks. This is the shade Signature. And this is one of my all-time favorite eyeshadow palettes. It's just such an easy go-to. It has these perfect neutral shades. I love the way that the formula works. It's really easy to work with. Um, it's not overly pigmented, so you can kind of build up a little bit more gradually. It's just a super useful palette. It works really well on its own if you wanted to do a fully matte look. It gives the most beautiful brown smoky eye but you can also pair it with more shimmery shades from other palettes or single shadows, even the Victoria Beckham Lid Lusters if you wanted a little bit more sparkle and shine. So I love this palette, one of my favorites, and I would definitely repurchase it. And last but not least, we have an Olivia Palermo palette. This is actually the only Olivia Palermo palette I have still at this point. It's the Eau Naturelle palette, and it's another one of my favorites and quite similar to the Victoria Beckham in the sense that it's a really good go-to everyday type of palette. You can get beautiful smoky looks. This one actually does have a mix of mattes and metallics, so it is more versatile than the Victoria Beckham one in that sense. And I've loved every single look that I've ever done with this palette. It is nice to have the pop of blue here, but I would say if there were one thing I could change about it, I would probably replace the blue with the green or something like that, just because that's more to my taste. But I still love this palette. This shade here, Fawn, is one of my favorite eyeshadows of all time. It's this incredible kind of sparkly, shiny, brownish taupe that actually looks more impressive on the eyes than it does in swatches, but you can get a little bit of a sense of the dimensionality with that color. I just love it. I love that it's a neutral palette, but you've still got some like more warm leaning and more cool leaning. This one here is a little bit warmer. The one I swatched already there was a little bit cooler, cooler, warmer. You've got this nice kind of cream color that I find really useful and just kind of blending out, or if you wanted an inner corner highlight with that or just to lighten up any of the other shades, you could always mix in that cream. So I think this is a really special palette, a really beautiful palette 
The packaging is amazing. It's probably the heaviest palette I have and has such a luxurious feel to it. And the quality is very luxurious as well. So I would definitely repurchase the Olivia Palermo Au Naturel palette. All right, so just to recap, I've got four here that I would not repurchase. The Viseart Paris Edit, the Natasha Denona Metropolis palette, the Glam Light Ice Cream Dream palette, and the Pat McGrath Divine Rose 2 palette. I have two that I would repurchase, but only if they were on a decent sale. The Pat McGrath Ritualistic Rose Quad, as well as the Sydney Grace Temptalia on the Horizon palette. And then we've got four that I would definitely repurchase even at full price. The Suku 117 Quad, the Victoria Beckham Signature Palette, the Natasha Denona Zendo Palette, and the Olivia Palermo Au Naturel Palette. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any questions or comments below. I always love to see those. If you had any thoughts on me doing other videos like this with other types of makeup, like lipsticks or blushes or whatever, let me know what you'd like to see. If you'd like to see more from me and you haven't subscribed to my channel already, I would love for you to do so. Thank you so much for watching, take care, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!